For more than a quarter of a century now, the Catholic Church has been one of the only sources of assistance for most of the more than 9,000 West Papuan refugees from Indonesia living along the border in Papua New Guinea. Even though the refugees live in very isolated and sparsely populated areas, difficult to access, the Church has succeeded in providing education and emergency services to the community. On a recent trip to Europe, Bishop Giles Cott, responsible for the Diocese of Daru Kionga, where the refugees now live, sat down with me to discuss the challenges and present potential solutions to the plight of these refugees. One big difficulty that we have now is that those who live along the Octidi River, Alice River and the Fly River, uh, they are affected by the sediment coming from Octidi mine and because they are not traditional landowners on this side of the border, they don't have access to compensation package. That's a difficulty. That's because they have no documents and they're not official landowners. Yeah, they're not official landowners. Uh, in Papua New Guinea, they have put a fee that is very high for those who apply for citizenship, which is uh, 4,000 American dollars, which none of the refugees can afford unless they obtain a big job with the mine or government and so forth. What, what do you feel needs to be done to overcome these hurdles? Firstly, on the mining, the mining issue, um, the pollution compensation, and, and then secondly, on access to documentation. Uh, I think we need pressure groups that uh, help them and help us to put pressure on the government because the OTD belongs fully to the government now, so that they compensate their people, uh, those people that are affected by, by the mine, the, the pollution and so forth, uh, for other issues like documents or to waiver the cost, uh, the fee to become citizen. Uh, I think uh, NGOs need to get involved a bit more. Just to touch on, finally, to touch on one of the, the issues that you raised was the issue of pollution and mining. How much of an issue is this in terms of uh, destruction of the environment, creation of forced migration where, where the land is no longer? Is this an issue? It is an issue because people have to find more land. Uh, let's say you say go swamps your land for gardening and for fishing and all this and this uh, makes uh, relationship difficult sometimes because the number of refugees uh, is bigger in a way than the local people so the, there's a big pressure there, uh, tensions, uh, a lot of tensions also some of the refugee camps are located on very low land and uh, a few times a year when the river comes up too high uh, they are flooded but there are local villages affected by that also and it's rising and rising more and more. So the government will have to move those local people to new sites and they will have to move the refugees, some refugees also to new sites. So there's, a, there's, there's an issue, if you like, of environmental degradation Yes. and then creating tensions within populations which could lead to big, conflict. Big, big tensions, yes. Another issue is that on the side of Papua, when, for instance, I talk to officials from the other side, well, they say it's okay, there's no problem, the refugees can come back, we'll take care of them. But then I say, if everything is okay, why uh, you do not allow the NGOs, uh, big organizations, to go and work there and see with their own eyes that it is okay? So th there's something that is uh, not right. The military is still uh, s so powerful and uh, involved in uh, Papua. Uh, that that uh, is part of the big uh, difficulties in the problem.